my beautiful girls and welcome into today's video. I am so, so excited to have you. This topic today, we are talking about how to stay connected to your feminine energy in very difficult situations. So we're talking about toxic households and family members, toxic friends, toxic work environments. Even if you don't have any of these, this video is going to keep you prepared for anything difficult that you face in your life. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first part that I want to talk about is toxic households. And you girls know I always sit and plan the video about 30 minutes before I actually live stream. And for today's topic, I kept thinking, what am I going to talk about today? It was the first time in so long that it actually felt blank that I didn't have anything that I was really on my heart to share. And then I remembered a dream that I had last night and this dream was so clear and I just knew God was saying, Alexis, you have to talk about this. And if I'm being completely honest, I have known that I need to make this video, but I've been avoiding it for months and months. And I see you girls asking. So here it is, finally, toxic households. And you'll see why I was always so nervous to make this video. If you are in a toxic household, I completely, completely understand me because I've been here myself. Everything that I'm gonna share with you, I've actually been here. And when it comes to being in your feminine energy, what we always talk about here is you need to feel safe, you need to feel relaxed, you need to feel inspired, you need to feel beautiful and loved. It is 100% possible for you to feel this way and for you to be in your feminine energy in any difficult situation. I want you to know that I don't want you to lose hope just because you are around toxic family members. So here's how you're going to do that. Number one, the most important thing for you to know is the importance of inner work. You working on yourself. I call, per, I call inner work personal development for the soul. While you are in a toxic household, it doesn't matter if you're living with your sister or just your mother, you have both parents. If there's one toxic person in the household, you have to be doing inner work. Here's what's going to happen. You are going to learn how to observe rather than react with this person. This is so, so important. I've been in a very toxic household myself and what was constantly happening was I was triggered and it would shift me out of my feminine energy. If your body tightens up, if your body gets angry, if you get really upset and overwhelmed, it's going to disconnect you from your feminine energy. When you are doing inner work, you learn to get triggered less because you can step back. It's almost like you step out of your body and you're seeing an experience happen from a third point of view. And it allows you to observe and understand that person, that situation better than to just respond. And I'll give you a clear example. So let's say that, okay, this is what happened for me growing up. Let's say that there is an abusive parent that you have and you're constantly walking on eggshells, constantly wondering when are they gonna be home? Are they going to yell at you? Is something going to happen to you? When your body is constantly in that stressed state, you're constantly triggered. Here's what you have to learn how to do. You have to learn to observe the emotions that are happening in your body. So while I was living in this household, I started doing my inner work. And what that looked like for me was reading books about how to heal my body, how to heal my mind. And I started realizing there was a lot of anxiety that was sitting in my body. Once I became aware of that, I was able to let it go and I was able to be conscious of it. So when I got triggered, when I heard the footsteps or when I heard the yelling, what it would do for me and what my inner work would do for me is allow me to catch that emotion and say, I don't need to hold on to this right now. My body is safe. I am safe. I am rested. When you can begin to be more conscious of what's happening to your body, you are going to get less triggered. The footsteps that would come whenever I would hear them, that used to really trigger me personally. I no longer got triggered by them because I learned to heal and release and reaffirm to myself, I am safe. So that is how you are going to stay in that mode of feminine energy. I know that there's so many different types of toxic people. There's very extreme and abusive toxic people. There's some that are just disrespectful to your boundaries. It can be all toxic. Your inner work is going to save you. It is going to help you look at that person better. Another part of feminine energy, it's maintaining that high vibrational state. And if you don't know what a high vibration is, every living being has a vibrational frequency. It's either low, medium, or high. The high vibe people are the people that are glowing. They feel good. It's the women in their feminine energies, the men in their divine, healthy, masculine energies. They're happy. 
They're conscious. They're self-aware. They are healthy. These people, they give off this glow of happiness and love and confidence, and they share it with others. People that are lower vibe, they are people that are not fun to be around. You're around them and it feels that they take your energy. You just feel so drained afterwards. When you are at a high vibrational state, you are a magnet for everything that you want to attract. Money, relationships, opportunities. You don't even have to work for it, it just comes to you because you are the vibrational match for it. So you being in this toxic household is going to mess with your vibration. What I want you to do, keep your vibe high. And I will explain some things or some ways that you can do that. Something for me is going outside, being in nature, physically grounding, connecting your feet to the soil, being in the sun. Nature recharges you. It recharges that vibration. So what I started doing is going for walks. As soon as I was old enough to go by myself, I would leave the house, take my dog, go for walks. And being at the park in the sun, it lifted my vibration. I want you to physically move yourself out of this toxic environment. Excuse me. Another thing that you're going to do is to create one area in the house. It doesn't even have to be a whole room. One area in the house or the apartment that is your safe space. So for me, I actually had two. I was so, so lucky. Once I got older, once I was, I think, 17, I finally got my own room. I always shared rooms my whole life. And once I had my own room, I made that the cleanest, the safest, the most beautiful place that it could be. What I did before that is I made my bathroom my safe place. When I was in there, the door was closed. The toxic no longer existed. It was just me with God in the bathroom. I made it clean. I made it um, very high vibe in there. And that was a place where I could go and connect my body to safety. Remember what I teach you, feminine energy thrives on safety. If your body is rested and safe, you can access your feminine energy. So I want you to find a room in the house, an area in the house, maybe it's a closet, that you can go and get your body to that safe space. Another part of this too is you want as much light as possible. So this is so crazy, but when I was growing up, I wasn't allowed, or well, okay, towards like my later teenage years, we weren't allowed to really open up the curtains in our house. And it was always so dark. It was maybe 1 p.m., all the curtains, the blinds had to be closed. And it makes you very depressed when you're not around natural light. So what I want you to do is, even if it's your room, even if it's the bathroom, find a place where you can let as much natural light in. And I know that this can sometimes be hard, especially if you're living with a husband or a wife or a partner who is the toxic one and they don't allow you to kind of move the house around. I know it can be difficult, but see if there's a way that you can just bring more light in. Light is your key to a high vibration. In my space now, there is light everywhere. I don't even use curtains. I don't have curtains. It's just my blinds and they're just open at all times, except for when I'm sleeping. So natural light, your safe space, get outside, get in the sun, touch some grass. I know that these things can sound so simple, but they will change your life. This is how I got out of that toxic environment, keeping my vibe high, doing inner work. If you have lived with a narcissistic person before, like I have, I want you to do specific inner work around setting boundaries and healing codependency. I never thought I was codependent until I realized I was in my first relationship. So if you have dealt with a narcissistic partner or with a narcissistic parent especially, I want you to do work around this. When it comes to setting boundaries, and there's going to be two sections that you can fall into. One is you cannot set boundaries with this toxic person. Maybe it's a partner, maybe it's a parent. This was me. If you set a boundary, you will get physically abused, verbally abused, you will be punished in some way. I totally understand. Sometimes you cannot set a boundary without consequences. Then there's other situations where you can set a boundary with this toxic person, but you're scared to. That's totally understandable and I'm going to help you with both. So with the first example, let's say that you cannot set a boundary with this person. What I want you to do, start setting boundaries with other people outside the house. When you go to the grocery store, if, um, I'm trying to think of an example, okay. Let's say that you got an apple and the grocery or the cash register person forgot to put it in the grocery bag. The old version of me, the people pleasing, scared, 
really wounded feminine version of me would have just left the apple and not said, any, said anything because I was so scared to speak my mind. You have to start speaking your mind. Tell them, I think that you forgot to put the apple in the bag. I know that it's scary, but start to do stuff like that. Start to set boundaries with friends, with uh, peers at school, with other people. And then eventually you can slowly practice on the toxic person. And let's say that you're just scared to set boundaries with this person in general. I totally understand that too. I want you to do it anyways. Because if you can get through this challenge, my girl, you will be unstoppable once you get out. I started slowly setting boundaries with that toxic uh, person in my house and when I ended up leaving the household later, I leaped so far in my inner work journey because of that. It's like you're almost starting from the most difficult level on a video game and then you get out into the real world, you have no problem doing it. So start using your toxic household as an opportunity for you to do inner work, to practice, and to learn how to feel safe. Again, if you can feel safe in this environment, you will thrive in the real world. It is actually such a blessing to be in a toxic household. If I've never had the toxic and abusive childhood that I did, I would never be here with you right now because it awakened this massive healing journey in me. When you get broken or when you become broken as a woman, you are forced to come back together and to just lift yourself up in a way that normal women don't get the opportunity to. So use this as a blessing. Pain is temporary. This toxic household is temporary. I'm trying to think of what else I wanted to say here. Okay, a few more things. Then we're going to talk about toxic work environments and then just toxic, difficult people and friends overall. So I do believe that it is best to move out of toxic households. Even if it is scary, even if you don't have money, I, did, I was so broke when I was living with this toxic person. I didn't have a lot of money coming in. I was working at a juice bar making, I think, $12 an hour. What I started doing, spending one hour a day envisioning the future that I dreamed of having. So one hour a day. I was working on my vision board. I was setting up my business. I was learning about uh, different sources for passive income. I want you to start doing this. Every single day, one hour it will change your life. And do not tell the toxic person that you are doing this. Keep this to yourself. Keep this to the people that you do trust. All right, what else did I wanna say? Okay. I want you to also remember it's important to keep the peace. Like I said, you don't want to react when you're triggered, you want to observe. Sometimes, and I've been guilty of this too, you will purposely aggravate that person because we're in a toxic pattern. We trigger that person, they trigger us. It's like a very unhealthy cycle that we're in. I want you to start being aware of when you're doing this and learn to keep the peace because that person, they're not worth your time or energy. Rather than triggering them unconsciously, start to become aware of when you're doing that and stop. Pour that time and energy into searching for a new job, building your business, investing in other relationships, and getting out of that environment. Okay, that's all that I wanted to say on toxic households. If some more stuff comes up, I'll be happy to share with you. Oh, quick announcement too. Okay, so my girls who have joined Divine and Aligned, session two is tomorrow. I'm so excited to see you. This is my course for girls who want to run their dream business, girls who want to live their dream lifestyle. If you wanna be a coach, a content creator, a business owner, maybe you don't even have a business idea yet, I am making this course for you. It is the one-on-one guide on how I went from being broke to being a multiple six-figure business owner. You can do this at any age, any circumstance. Unfortunately, the course is completely full, so I have just closed enrollment. But as I was closing enrollment, this was about three hours ago, something in my body did not feel good doing this. And I put on the website, the program's full, and I let you girls know that there are only a few spots left but it does not feel good in my body to cut off the enrollment because I feel that there's women out there who need this information. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to make the price of the course lower back to its original pre-sale price, but if you want to join at this point, you will get access to all of the recorded sessions. So that means all of the girls who are currently in the course, you will be the ones that get to come onto the live session. I promise at this course, I would be there with you and have an intimate space on the Zoom call to answer questions, to talk with you. 
So the, the original group that has joined the course, the live session link will only be available for you. And I will email you every week before the live session. We're gonna meet now until the end of the year. There's gonna be about 12 sessions in this course. If you join at this point, you can still access the course. You can still access the recorded sessions. They will be put out as the live sessions are done every week, but the live Zoom sessions will only be for girls who are already in the course. That's why I'm making the price lower back at its original pre-sale price. So if you wanna join, I'll open that up in a couple hours. It just didn't feel good in my heart to close it. Okay, back to this lesson now. Toxic work environments. Oh my gosh, my girls, I've got some stories for you. I don't think I've ever shared this stuff before. Okay, so again, you know how I said for toxic households, inner work is going to be your key. Same thing with toxic work environments. And it can be so frustrating. I think a lot of people are at that point where they don't know if it's a toxic work environment. They don't know if it's them causing the issue. They don't know what it is. I'm gonna clear that up for you. So. I want you to start looking at this current job that you have as practice. Maybe it's just an opportunity for you to go and do inner work every day and you just happen to get paid for it. That is what I started doing with my previous jobs. I just quit my job a year ago from last month. So I've only been a bus or I've only been running my business working for myself for a little over a year. It is life-changing. It's such a better lifestyle and I want to help you get there. So when I was at my previous job, I was working as a marketing coordinator and I was working as a hostess in a restaurant. So at my job as a marketing coordinator, I've never told you girls this on YouTube. So what happened was I was working at this job. I had my degree in marketing and I wanted to do something with it. So I started working at this job for maybe, maybe five months. And I realized I really deserve a raise. What I was making compared to the industry average, way different. And my girls, when I tell you, you can do inner work like this, it literally happened to me. I was such a people pleaser, a woman who was so wounded and scared to speak up about a year and a half ago. And asking my boss for this raise at that time was the scariest thing to me. So I was making, I think, $20 an hour and I was going to ask him for $25 an hour. So I sat down with him one day and I just asked him, I said, I really love working here and I feel that my value is now worth $25 an hour, especially compared to the industry average. I would like to receive a raise. His answer was no. And it was just me working for this boss. We were, or I was technically an independent contractor. So I said, okay. And I sat on it for a couple days. I immediately started looking for other jobs. What happened was I put in my two week notice with him and I was just going to keep my hostess job that I had at the time, put in my two week notice with him. His response to me was, you are not going to get paid for the last two weeks of your work since you're putting in your two weeks. And I said, nope, that is not gonna work for me. It's a long story, so I'm not gonna go into it all. I ended up having to take him to court just to get that last paycheck. But it was such a huge lesson for me on how to set boundaries and stand up for your one or stand up for yourself as a woman. I was fighting to make $25 an hour. If I never set that boundary, I would never have the income that I have now. And I'm so grateful and excited to say this. This is the first month that I've ever made six figures in one month. Profit. If I never done that inner work, I would never be here. This is why inner work is so, so key. Everything that you are facing in life, every difficult situation, it has a purpose, even if you cannot see it now. So use that job as an opportunity of doing inner work that you just happen to get paid for. All right, so there was something else that happened too. So my, we'll talk about mean girls at work too because I know a lot of us go through this. I was working as a hostess in a restaurant and that's the job that I had right before I opened up this business. And as I was working there, it, I live in Las Vegas and this restaurant was on the Las Vegas Strip. So if you've been here before, there's a certain type of crowd that is on the Las Vegas Strip. A lot of people drink, gamble, all this stuff. So a lot of the men that I experienced were very forward and very disrespectful. So I used that job as my opportunity to practice my dark feminine energy. The, 
not the comebacks, but the way that I would start responding to men, the way that I started carrying myself, it was with so much more power and so much more confidence. If I had never had that hostess job, which I felt so embarrassed to have at the time, even though there was nothing wrong with it, if I had never had that job, I would never be in my dark feminine energy now. And my girls who are in Divine and Aligned and the Master Your Feminine Energy course, you know how much you need your dark feminine energy. It fuels your income that you make. It fuels your relationship standards. It is the biggest blessing because it is the powerhouse behind your sensuality and your creativity. So your difficult, toxic work environment might be trying to wake up your dark feminine energy, or maybe it might be trying to wake up your light feminine energy. So another tip that I have for you is if you are, okay, this is hard because I know a lot of people work remote. If you are at a job where you're around other people, start networking with other people. I was at that hostess job. Do you know how many business owners I met every night? And I never took advantage of the opportunity. There could be someone that is waiting to hand you your next job. Way better pay, a way better position. So use your current job as an opportunity to network. And I have a bonus tip for you too. If you are working at a remote job, ask your boss to get you a membership to a co-working office. A co-working office, it's a, it's a beautiful giant space where entrepreneurs and business owners and Everyone who works remote, they come and work in this beautiful office to network, to hang out. It's a, it's a really, really great environment. So at my marketing job, I used to work at one, it was called WeWork. Ask your boss if you work remote to get you a WeWork membership. Tell them that you will have chances to network for the company. Tell them that you will have a more happier work environment and you'll be more motivated to be productive. Tell them that it can be a write-off for their company. You have this knowledge at your fingertips now, I want you to use it. While you're at WeWork, you're gonna be a little bit of a savage. You're going to start looking for other opportunities. Start meeting other business owners. Start networking with people who can get you to the next level. Get you out of that difficult situation, if you're in one. I met so many people who are my friends today who are kick-ass entrepreneurs, men and women. So the people here are going to lift your vibe and they're going to inspire you. I always say this, it helps to have that person that you want to be physically show up in front of you. If I had never seen women show up in front of me that were making six figures a year, six figures a month, I would have never thought that I could do it. So find those people who are your physical examples and they kind of rewire your subconscious mind to know that you can do it too. Okay. Oh yes, okay, I have a good one for you too. So. I want you to begin writing out, I feel so bad for saying this sometimes, I want you to begin using some of that time while you're at your current toxic work environment to plan for your dream life. So when I was working at my hostess job, it wasn't super toxic, I was really lucky, but there was some mean girls there for sure. And what I started doing is while I was sitting, or while I was standing at the hostess stand every night, and I took out the sticky notes from the desk and I started writing out how many, so I also own a woman's loungewear line. It's called Celeste Wear. I sell robes, pajamas, nightgowns. I started writing out, okay, Alexis, how many robes would you need to sell a day to make a certain amount of income where you can quit this job? I started mapping out and planning what I needed to do to get to the next level. And I also started writing out, what would I do if I had that money? How would I spend my days? When you can connect to that high vibe, that dream reality, it pulls you closer to it. You become a magnet for it. Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this a lot, envisioning your reality through meditation. I want you to literally use your time at work to meditate. Start planning for your dream life. Every boss that's watching this right now is like, dang it, Alexis, stop telling my employees to do this. Oh well. All right. So like I said too, it's a blessing that you are here right now. Use it as fuel to get to your next job. If I had never been broke and had those jobs that I hated, I would never be here. I would have been just so complacent and I wouldn't have moved. So use whatever difficult situation you're going through as fuel to get to the next spot. Okay, something else important too. So if you don't plan to leave your job, I know that there's a lot of people that are really happy with their job and I love that. 
if you don't plan to leave but you're still dealing with some toxic people, maybe a boss that's really, really difficult, I want you to do two things. The first one, give 110% of your best every single day with everything you do. Excuse me because you will eventually be noticed even if it takes a year i see so many people do this and they don't even know but <clears throat> there's people that come into the restaurants or their bosses are watching them and we don't always see it and more importantly it's going to build your internal integrity which i always tell you girls that's the key to confidence you knowing that every decision you've made is your best will build your confidence more than anything 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 always do your best because then you know that you are literally living your best life and there's nothing to regret. So do your best, even if you're in a difficult situation. And this is going to apply to number one, I, I should have mentioned this earlier, toxic households, but number two, toxic work environments. Here is something that I teach you inside the courses, but I wanna tell you here. Start studying Robert Greene's work. Start studying psychology and human behavior. I might have to make a whole course just on this because I've studied it so, so much. When you can learn and understand how people work, that is the key to building emotional intelligence. And you can have anything you desire once you do that. So if you are dealing with mean girls at work, I want you to read the book, The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. He's a brilliant psychologist, one of my favorite authors. He's wrote The 48 Laws of Power, if you're familiar with that. Start understanding why people are the way that they are, and you will learn different tactics such as how to appeal to someone's ego to get what you want, how to understand why people function, why people are controlling, why people are mean, and you can play your cards right. Yes, you're going to be a savage in some of these situations, but I want you to live your best life. And I also want you to keep in mind, I love and care about other people, but I also love and care about myself. Me being my best self is going to allow me to treat everybody with love and respect. So my girls who struggle with setting boundaries or um, dealing with difficult people, start studying Robert Greene's work. It will change your life. And if you're not already, join the Master Your Feminine Energy course because this is the blueprint on how I became the woman that I am now. Everything is in there for you. Toxic friends. So this one is difficult because I'm actually going to give you two different directions that you can go in. So when you're dealing with toxic friends, I believe in my core and I always say take the advice that resonates with you, leave the rest. In my heart, I do not believe in having a toxic friend. I do not believe in keeping one. I always believe walk away, cut the friendship off if you can. So it's not normal to have toxic friends. It is not normal. And sometimes we get so stuck in our current environment, current reality, current media, that we think having toxic friends is okay. Shows like Euphoria really glorify this. It is not normal. I have five close girlfriends. God is so good because they are the most amazing women in the world. None of them have ever disrespected me or had toxic behavior. This is not acceptable in friendships. Yes, I have had toxic friends in the past, which is why what I'm gonna share with you, I want you to really take this and run because I do not believe toxic friends should still be in your reality, especially if you are here, especially if you have been following this channel for a long time, they're not going to align with the path that you are going. So, <clears throat> if you, let's say that you have to see this friend, for example, if it's a roommate, so I had a friend, or I had a roommate in college who was my friend at the time, and it was a very toxic friendship because there was a lot of insecurity that I started noticing. This is one of the biggest red flags in a partner, in a friend, in anyone. If someone is insecure, <clears throat> they need a level of healing outside of you. You do not, it is not your job to heal them. So this friend that I, or this roommate that I had was very, very insecure, and I could see that through a lot of the comments that she made to me. <clears throat> so what? So let me think of an example. Okay, when I would bring food into the room, I have always been a very conscious, healthy eater because I've had a lot of gut health issues. And I just love feeling good, let's be honest. So I eat mostly plant-based. I ate very healthy in college. And when I would bring something like a salad into our room to go and eat dinner, 
she would make comments such as, oh, are you one of those people that actually enjoy eating vegetables? This is where you put up a block and end the toxic relationship. And if you have to deal with a person, I want you to start responding like this. I want you to stop that energy right there. Do not give in to that. Do not get triggered. Do not react. So what I would say is something like this when she said, are you one of those people who actually like eating vegetables? What do you mean? Isn't everyone like that? That is how you respond. You become confused. I've taught you girls this in the dark feminine energy sections of the course. You become confused and you do not give any energy back. You almost play dumb. You have to because it's going to keep your energy for you to fuel into your own life. If I would have respond, what do you mean? Or is that an attack against me? I'm giving her my energy. Toxic people, toxic friends do not deserve that. So when comments are made to you, stop the energy right there. Another example, this roommate would love, love to gossip. I did not feel comfortable doing it, especially when we would go and hang out with those friends an hour later. So when she would gossip, I would not respond. And yes, it's going to be awkward. You just stand there like this. And eventually she started saying months later, oh, I would tell Alexis this or I would tell you this, but you don't like to gossip. People start to become aware of this and they get to take your energy when you allow them to unload onto you. So do not absorb the toxic energy from friends. Cut it off by giving a response that implies you're confused or just don't respond at all. That's how you deal with people that you still have to see that are toxic. Let's say that there's a friend who's in your life that they're kind of on the fence, you don't know. If your gut is telling you there's something off, there is. Trust me on this. And I have a video that'll help you. It's called How to Know the Difference Between Your Anxiety and Your Intuition. Your gut is never wrong. My girls, this is our gift, our intuition, the Holy Spirit. When you get the feeling, trust it. So I had a friend, we were best friends for eight years. I never, ever thought the friendship would end, never. And I started seeing little signs of disrespect in about the last year of our friendship. The friendship just ended a year ago. So with these signs, I started realizing I feel really scared that this friendship is gonna end. This is not how a healthy friendship should be. There were little signs of disrespect, broken boundaries, and this is probably gonna happen for you, but there's usually one thing that happens where you just know this is done. So for me, this friend had, so about a year and a year and three months ago, I really started posting a lot on TikTok and I just started posting on YouTube. And she had sent me a video that was making fun of people who live stream. In that moment, when I opened up the message from her, I knew the friendship was over. Follow that feeling. Otherwise, it's gonna get worse and worse. So I ended the friendship there, never looked back. Yes, it's going to hurt for a little bit, but trust me, the friends that God sends to you afterwards, they are a million times better. I would never have my close girlfriends today, the deep, healthy, soul sister relationship that we have, if I was still allowing the other type of toxic energy in. So yes, pain is temporary, but you are unlocking a new level and deeper intimacy in new relationships going forward. This applies to romantic relationships too. If you feel it in your gut that it's off, it probably is. And allow yourself to get to that next level. So a common question that I'll see too is, well, what if that friend that you have, you really wanna keep them? What if they just need time and space to heal? So here's the other path. So I told you, I believe cut the friendship, end it. Toxic friendship should not even be a part of your life if you are on your inner work journey. But another option could be, and I teach you this in Master Your Feminine Energy, you view relationships as layers to an onion. So your close, close group, these are your soul aligned clients and friends and partners. These people you keep in your inner circle, meaning that you give them the most time and energy. You respect and follow their, or you don't follow, but you respect and you observe their beliefs. You love where they're going in their life and you like to be in alignment with that. You keep those people close to you. If you have a friend that you don't want to end the relationship yet, but it's getting toxic, what I want you to do, move them to an outer layer, as if it's an onion. <laughs> move them to an outer layer, 
give that friend less time and energy because everybody heals on their own time. You can have friends, maybe you guys have a fallout and you end up coming back together later. This often happens, it's very, very real. Some people, they, or not some people, but everybody grows at different times. So maybe you've done a lot of inner work and your friend hasn't caught up yet. That can be okay too. You just give them less time and energy. This is really important because if you don't, it's almost as if there is a cord that is connected to you two and you pull each other. So if you are going here, but your friend is still down here, you cannot get higher without this weight. It's almost like an anchor. And here's an example that I'll share with you. So this same friend, the girl that I told you was my best friend for a majority of my life, when I first started this business, The Feminine Glow, I was on cloud nine. And I still am, I love this business. It's my soul aligned passion, it's my baby. When I started this business, she never said anything about it, never recognized that I started it, never said great job, uh, just never even acknowledged it at all. And one day we were going to lunch and I started telling her more about it. I told her one of my clients, she lives in Qatar, she has a podcast and she wants to fly me out to be on there. I'm so excited, I might go and do this. I've never been to the Middle East before. And her first response to me was, that sounds really dangerous. Those are the signs that I'm telling you. Pay attention to when someone is truly happy for you because that response is not it. Versus now the friends that I have, when I tell them stuff like this, they are jumping for joy. They are so excited. They're asking questions about it. That is how it should be. Sometimes we don't know what a healthy friendship looks like. That is it. It is people celebrating you the way that you celebrate yourself. It is people just being filled with love and excitement for your journey, not filling your head with doubt and fear. And nothing against friends who do this, but it's just that you're at different mindsets. Choose to be aligned with people who have the same mindset as you because it's going to plant seeds in your mind. So when her response was, mm, that sounds really dangerous, seed is not planted and I never ended up going. So it's very dangerous if you have people that are pulling you back to the old identity when you've done so much growth. And again, it's nothing against them. It's just that we're on separate paths and that is okay. It is so, so, so important that you find friends who are aligned with you. They will pull you up closer, closer to your dream life. I have a really, really good video on this on YouTube. I believe it's called the five qualities to look for in female friends. I will put it in the description for you. So another note is when it comes to how do you know if you should end a friendship or not or a relationship, speak your boundary once. If your boundary gets broken again, that is a sign that the friendship should end because someone who truly loves and respects you, after you tell them once what's on your heart, they want to honor that. They want to respect that. This is normal. So if your boundary is broken again and again, that's probably an indicator to end the relationship. All right, so this is all the notes that I had. I always miss stuff, so let me see real quick. Let me do a, a real quick uh, conclusion. So toxic households, how you're going to do that? Create a safe space, get in the sun, do your inner work, start to move your energy away from these people and get connected to your dream future. Toxic work environments, start studying human psychology, human behavior, Start using that opportunity as a place to do your inner work that you happen to get paid for. Toxic friends, you have two paths. So you can either end it and become available for the people who are aligned with you, or you can move that friend to an outer layer. Give them less time and energy. And real quick before I take some questions too. So I told you girls I'm gonna have my brother on as a special guest. My brother is such a conscious, healthy, masculine man. I want you girls to meet him. In the comments of this video, I'm going to re-upload it to YouTube in just a couple hours for those who are watching live. Go ahead and in the comments, ask any questions that you have for my brother because then we can prepare for the video better. I really respect his time too, so I wanna make sure when he's here, we give you girls everything that you want to know. So go ahead and ask anything, any topics, questions that you'd like to see. All right, my girls, let me take some of your questions. I did see a question earlier, is divine and aligned closed? It is right now, but I don't feel good keeping it closed. Something is on my heart telling me to open it. So I'm gonna open it, but the opportunity to do the course live with me over Zoom, that is closed. 
it is completely full. I want to keep that really intimate. Oh, Lisa. Okay, yeah. So, Lisa, I will up, I will open up Divine and Align in just a couple of hours. Great topic. Perfect timing. Oh, it's been on my heart to do this topic for so long. But honestly, I was really nervous to talk about toxic households because it's something that's really, really, really close to my heart. It inspired my whole healing and inner work journey. So I needed to make sure that I had all of the... Uh, information gathered that I wanted to share with you and last night God always does this God will send me dreams when I need to do something I had a dream about being in the toxic household so I knew okay it's time to share with the girls girl you know we needed this topic Priya hey girl <laughs> yep oh Priya I miss you girl let's see Sending you love, thank you. Boundaries, yep. So how do I understand if someone's meant for me? He told me, you have to earn my sweetness, which sort of puts me off. What did I tell you about that gut feeling? Girl, you're spot on. That puts me off reading it. And he was, he said, I'm a little scared of commitment, but I would maybe commit. I love that quote that says, if it's not a hell yes, then it's a hell no. You deserve a man who is 100% sure about you. This man, he has told you I'm not fully ready for commitment. Always, always, always believe him. And here's what I would respond. Okay, I completely understand that. Hopefully I'm still available when you are. And you go and date other people. I know that it's hard because our heart is often with these men, but my girl, your heart, your inner work journey has led you to be available for the man who is so sure about you. Remember what I said about feminine energy. If you don't feel safe, if you don't feel relaxed, you will not be in your feminine energy. This man is not going to make you feel relaxed if he's not even 100% sure about himself. He's not going to be in his full masculine energy. And you have to earn my sweetness. To me, that's very feminine energy in a man, that you have to earn something from him. Uh, sounds like he's maybe in the wounded masculine. Yeah, I cannot imagine my man ever saying you have to earn my sweetness. I cannot. Alexis, I feel very anxious for interviews. I feel like I'm not capable to perform the job role and it shows in my body language. How do I move past this? Shania, great question, girl. Here's something that I'm going to recommend. And I recommend this to everyone who wants to learn how to be a better speaker. Join a public speaking group. I'm, per I'm currently a part of Toastmasters and they teach you how to speak. They put you on the spot, they give you a safe place to sit in that anxiety and discomfort and learn how to speak in front of others. A lot of people who want to get a really great job, they join groups like Toastmasters. So I recommend this for you, Shania. Here's something practical that you can do, and I actually did this in my job interviews in the past. Imagine that you have already gotten that job, that you are actually way, way, way ahead of that job. Way, way more advanced, way more leveled up than the position that you're applying for. Dress as if that's the case, speak as if that's the case, walk into the room as if that's the case. Even if you don't believe it, just pretend, because who really knows outside of you? Excuse me. When you go and interview for that job, your energy is going to communicate, I deserve this, I'm already your best fit. So just turn your energy switch on to say, yep, I'm already going to activate this side of me. And it's going to help release some of that anxiety. What about if you've both done inner work and your friend is starting to act higher than you all the way? Hmm, if, okay, if your friend is acting higher than you, this can be hard because this happens a lot in personal development. I've actually even probably been here too. What needs to happen is there needs to be some work around the ego. And maybe that will be something that she discovers on her own. But like I said, don't respond to the negative energy. When she acts higher than you, just do not respond at all. Because if you respond and you give in to that or you get upset, it's unconsciously teaching her it's okay to act like that. So just imagine that you guys are already at equal levels. The truth is, everyone is. We're at different parts of our inner work journey. We all know different aspects of life. So just give her that space to do some more work around the ego. see so many good questions. Yes, highly recommend Toastmasters. 
Thank you for your response. You're welcome, girl. Let's see. Oh, for a woman who is in their luteal cycle, how do you stay in a high vibration? I get so moody and crave fab food. It's hard to be healthy and positive. Girl, I, <laughs> are we in the same cycle right now? Because that's literally me. I'm on day 28 of my luteal phase. So I get so hangry and irritated in this phase. I actually track my hormones and just that alone really helps because then it gives me some grace that, oh, okay, one, this is temporary. I'm not going to feel this way forever. And I'm extra aware. During this time, I give myself more alone time than usual. So I say no to going out with my friends more. I distance myself a little bit more from family and from people because when I can take time to read my books and to take baths, to do face masks, to go to the park, that recharges my energy. That's what we need in that luteal phase. We need to recharge our energy. So pull your time and energy away from things that you're currently giving it to. Put it into things that'll shift your vibration to be higher, such as the things that I just described. That's a good, good question. Alexis, what is your take on the baby girl men of today's society who expect 50-50 and princess treatment? <laughs> Not for me. I think that the guys who love uh, princess treatment themselves, they're in their feminine energies. And to me, that's not attractive. I am attracted to healthy masculine energy. So I think that there's a lot of, I think that there's a lot of pressure on men that have caused them to shift into the wounded masculine state, which is why they want to do 50-50. It's why they want princess treatment. Things such as even our media. Media is always dumbing down men. It's always teaching them, don't allow your emotions to come out, you have to be manly, you have to be alpha. To be a healthy masculine man, you need the masculine and you need the feminine. So society has taught men, eliminate the feminine, only be masculine. This is a recipe for wounded masculine energy. So that's why men want the 50-50. Men are not inspired to protect and to provide and to step up because they've almost been dimmed down not to. So what I think needs to happen is women need to keep their standards high and leave these men hanging dry because as soon as we give in to the men who want 50-50, who want princess treatment, they learn that it's okay. That's not okay. It's not going to help them and it's not going to help us because we're so out of alignment in our natural energies. How you deal with a man who wants princess treatment is you don't. That man has to heal just like we have to heal to allow our feminine energy to thrive. I'm in an on and off relationship one year now. Is this going to get better someday? My girl, this is something that only you can answer. I do not know your full situation. I've met people who have been on and off and then they get married and their life is happy. They do a lot of inner work together. I think that if both people are committed to doing inner work and to being their best, to opening up, to being vulnerable, to healing their wounds, that relationship is 100% possible but I've also been in an on and off relationship and the pattern was always to go back to the wounds and the toxic behavior. So for us, it did not work, but everyone's situation is different. Mm. Lena says, once I started taking my inner work seriously, I was shocked realizing how much low energy I had preciously they're previously chosen to surround myself with. Thank you for your content, Alexis. Yes, Lena, girl, good realization. The same thing happened to me. Oh, I love you girls. Seeing African glow girls here is so exciting. I love this community. Yes, Chrissy. Oh my gosh, we have so many beautiful glow girls here. Oh, Priya says, please make that quote on a cup, lol. Keep your standards high and leave these men dry. <laughs> Girl, I might have to do that. Priya, if I forget, just put it in the Master Your Feminine Energy Facebook group. <laughs> this might be off topic, but how much sleep do you recommend to help with a healing journey? Eight hours a night, girl. But of course, everybody's body is different. For me, eight hours makes such a difference. So actually today I slept for nine hours. <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time. 
but in my luteal phase, I need extra sleep. So as much as you can get, girl. And what's really fascinating about sleep is it's going to help you heal because it's taking you to the subconscious mind. When you sleep, all of the limiting beliefs, the blocks, the wounds, they rise to the surface in the form of your dreams. And that's where your memories get stored. So if you're not sleeping, we studied this so heavily when I was in psychology in school. And if you are not sleeping fully, your memories are not processing. So you cannot remember things clearly. You cannot understand the wounds to heal clearly. And your subconscious is almost blocked. So eight hours a night, girl, that is a key. I love your hair today. Thank you, Mira. It's so different for me, girl. So I have naturally curly hair. And I have not gotten a trim in like seven months. <laughs> so bad. My hairstylist is always so mad at me. <laughs> she goes, Alexis, you need to come in every three months. But I don't. I come in like once a year. And it is so long. I did not expect this. I also got these pieces cut right here. So this is short. I cannot wait to see what it's like when it's curly. Oh, I love it. I always get bored of my straight hair after like two days though, and then I want to go back to curly. Hi Alexis, how do you sit comfortably in your new identity when you can't change your environment yet? How to not let it take you back to your old self every time? Here's something that I want you to know, Fatima. We've been programmed for 20, 30, 40 plus years with a certain identity. So do not beat yourself up if you go back to the old identity. Here's what you do instead. Catch yourself when you do it and remind yourself, this is the old identity popping up. Does this feel good in my body? Do I want to continue this way? Let's say something that I used to do is I would always go to food for comfort. That was my emotional stability, or I should say instability. When I would go to food for comfort, I had to catch that old identity and recognize this is not aligned with the new version of me. So catch yourself in that moment and say, nope, I'm going to break this habit and choose to align with the new version of me. The new version of me, she would go for a walk, she would meditate, she would pray to release those emotions that usually she would go to food for. So that is how you catch the old identity. Oh, Simret Beauty, thank you so much for the super chat. That is so sweet of you, girl. Simret, thank you, girl. Oh, I see so many amazing questions here. How long did it take for you to start seeing changes after you started doing deep inner work? I started doing deep inner work one month ago, but I'm feeling impatient. Yes, Matilde. Matilde, I hope I'm saying your name right, girl. This is fascinating. Parts of my journey have taken me months, years, for example, connecting to my dark feminine, releasing the people pleasing, setting boundaries, that took me a long time. But things with money and wealth and healing masculine energy, that was very, very quick for me. So for example, this year my goal was to make six figures in a year. And I'm so grateful I ended up, oh, so sorry girls about my dog. So my goal is to make six figures this year. It ended up that I, that I made that in six months. And then um, a couple weeks ago, I started doing inner, more inner work around money, which I'm going to teach you in the Divine and Aligned course. I started doing more inner work around money, and this month is my first month ever making six figures in a month. $100,000 profit. It blew my mind. It still doesn't feel real sometimes. But I did this deep inner work about four weeks ago. So inner work can be like this for you. It depends on what it is. It depends on how open you are to receiving, how high your vibration is. Do you drink coffee? No, I actually really dislike the taste of coffee. I've never really liked it. And with a lot of the studies that I've done around health and nutrition, I don't feel that coffee is healthy for your body. So I don't drink it. Excuse me, I drink a lot of tea. manifested breaking my favorite kombucha glass this week so that I can buy one of yours. <laughs> my girl, you've got to let me send you one. That is so funny. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't have, I'm so sad, I don't have my kombucha cup today. I have this glass. I honestly thought that it went better with my outfit. 
That is so funny. Um, I saw a good question from a mom here. Hi Alexis, I just finished watching your light and dark feminine energy video in the Master of Feminine Energy course. Marisol, did you like it girl? <laughs> that was, oh my gosh, I think that's the most um, awakened session that I've ever taught in a course. Something just came out of me when I was teaching that lesson and it is my favorite thing that I've ever taught. I want to recreate it inside of Divine and Align because I thought it was so, so powerful. I hope that you loved it, girl. I'm a mother of two, toddler, have responsibles of the family, currently working in a toxic environment. And you want to switch job. Yep, my girl, Karat, I hope I'm saying your name right. I think a lot of women relate to you here. In Divine and Aligned, a lot of the students are mothers and they want those better opportunities for themselves. My girl, let me tell you, it is possible. It doesn't matter what. And in fact, I think it's such a gift that you have your baby to inspire you. That's awesome. All right, my girls, I'm gonna take one more question, then I've gotta run. How to deal with rejection? Use it as redirection. Rejection equals redirection. I have a whole YouTube video about this. It's actually called Rejection Equals Redirection, so that is great for you. I think that's your first super chat. You deserve it. Simret, thank you. Oh, I love you girls. You're so sweet to each other. I am really, really blessed. I've received a lot of super chats and I just discovered the place to actually see this on YouTube. <laughs> I had no idea. My girls, if you've ever sent me one and I've never acknowledged it, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm so sorry that I missed those. I'm still trying to figure out YouTube, honestly. Okay, I really like this question. And I just lost it, oh my gosh. Where is it? Oh, I saw this question, but there's so many coming in. Um, sorry, girls, let me find this real quick. Okay, the question was something about when you desire something and it's not coming, what do you do in that waiting period? So here's, okay, let's use that, let's use this example. So this month, making six figures. So I honestly, I do this with everything that I attract and manifest. I I feel that it's already here before it actually is. So for example, with making $100,000 in a month, to me when I said that out loud, I thought, yeah, maybe that'll happen to me in a couple of years, right? I just started this business about a year ago and my other streams of income, I don't know. I didn't think that it would happen, but here's what I, what I did. I wrote down the goal. My goal is to make six figures in one month. As I wrote that out, I started feeling in my body. I closed my eyes and actually felt how would that feel to have $100,000. With my eyes closed, I imagined my bank account. I imagined what that money would look like sitting in there. I imagined money flowing in from multiple sources all around the world. I imagined how safe and secure and financially blessed and grateful I would be. I was connecting to that feeling, and I'm gonna teach you this inside Divine and Aligned. When you are manifesting something, forget the how, forget the where. Only connect to the desire, how it feels. The truth is, I there were places that that money came from that I never even expected this month. So when you just connect to that desire, seeds will be planted in your mind and you will think of new solutions. Two weeks, no, oh my gosh, not even two weeks ago. Last week, I launched my newest course, Divine and Aligned, when I wrote down I want to make six figures in a month, I didn't even know about that course yet, but the seed was planted in your body, God will send new ideas on how to make that desire a reality. So all you have to do, forget the steps that it takes to get there, forget the how, connect with the desire and always go back to that. With things like money and men and opportunities in life, those are infinite. So in my opinion, it's really easy to attract because there's no blocks. There's an infinite supply in the world. So forget the how, forget the when, connect with the desire. That's what you're gonna do. All right, my girls. Oh, I see a good comment, let me mention this real quick. Another shocking thing, I lost so much weight since I started to let go of low energy people and resentment this summer. I remember you mentioning this in an earlier video, I'm shook. Lena, yes, when you do inner work, 
you naturally lose weight in your body. It's the craziest thing because your body holds on to physical trauma and blocked emotions until you release it. So maybe some of the weight that you keep trying to work out and eat healthy and it's not going away, it is blocked emotion waiting to be released. How you do that is inner work, emotionally releasing, being conscious of your unconscious thoughts, seeing the way that you show up and choosing to align with the dream version of yourself the weight naturally sheds. If you look at pictures from me four years ago, my face was so different than it is today. We hold that trauma in our body physically until we release it. It is so fascinating to me. And a lot of my girls in the Master Your Fun and Energy course, they always say, Alexis, I've lost weight, or this is happening, money is coming in, I didn't even do anything. That's the magic of the feminine energy. You don't have to do anything. It's who are you being. That is how you're going to attract your dream life. All right, my girls, I never want to leave you, but I've got to run. I am meeting up with two of my girlfriends in a little bit. So, oh, I love your, I love your comments. All right, my girls, I will be back soon. And my girls who are in Divine and Aligned, I cannot wait to see you for session two tomorrow. The Zoom link is in the dashboard for you. And don't worry, if you want to still join that, I will open it up for you to join. Just remember, you won't be able to come to the live sessions, but you will have access to all of the recorded live sessions after they're completed. All right, my girls, I love you. I will see you in the next video. Bye.